What's up, Younger fans? I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is the place to be for a trip way behind the scenes and into the homes of my guests. This is your Getting Younger After Show. In this episode, our favorite love triangle went straight up hexagon. There were multiple hookups. We need to untangle all of them. And here to help me out is my very special guest, Peter Herman. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy. It's so nice to see you. So happy to see your face. You're so handsome. Well, and, and you couldn't look more spectacular and beautiful. And with the, with the whole, I don't know if that's your house or what house you're in, but I want to live there. So very nice. It's my casa. Can you believe? That's, that's your house? That's your casa? That's just, I, I want to go behind the scenes there. <laughs> beautiful. You can come over whenever you want. I'll cook you dinner. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So Peter, we've got a lot to catch up on. This episode was banana cans. That's what I'll say. So basically, I want to start it off with the billionaire elephant in the room, Quinn Tyler. Peter, of all the women in New York City who could be Charles's rebound, why, Quinn? Please explain this to me. The main reason why Quinn is because she's played by Laura Benanti. Um, so I think that anybody uh, played by Laura Benanti, Charles would have been more than happy to uh, unite with because <laughs> she is just extraordinary. She is. Um, I think that when we end relationships, we sometimes jump to the opposite end of the spectrum in some ways. Yeah. And so this was somebody who is deeply settled in her own life uh in 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 her own way whether we agree with what how what she is settled in uh what kind of ethics she is settled in or approach to the world she's settled in or amount of money she's settled in that's up to you whether you uh, are attracted to that or agree with that but when relationships end or they don't go the way that we want them to go then we uh yeah, look for a place of solace and a place of a place to recover. And those are some strange places sometimes that we go to. <laughs> well, I will say, Quinn does seem like the obvious villain, but she's infuriatingly likable. Why do you think that is? I know. <laughs> in past episodes and past seasons, she has been more of an on-the-nose villain, right? And and the writers were also writing for her that way, and she played it so beautifully that we just knew that's the antagonist and that's the one that he shouldn't be with. A, because of the way that Laura plays her, but also the way that she was written this season. Now, Laura as well, when she was reading it, we all thought, huh, is this the redemption of Quinn? Because she says herself, I essentially turned over a new leaf and I realized a lot and I have failed and it has taught me, it has taught me, it has changed me. And we actually start to think that that might be true. And I think that's what makes her really complex and really interesting. And yeah, so uh, I just I just thought it was so well written, so well played. I know, so good. I, I'm, what's in store for Quinn? That is the question I'll be pondering. So let's go to that Dave and Buster scene. So much fun. Did you guys actually get to play the games? We, we did get to play the games. I don't do well at Dave and Buster's. <laughs> At all. What? At all. That's, it's, I mean, I certainly love color and activity and all of that, but I, I, I do, I relax like in a monochromatic room. <laughs> and Dave and Buster's, <laughs> it's, I walk in, there are no windows. That's there true. are flashing lights. That's also uh, true. And, and it was also the first, it was the first time that we, uh, it was the first time that we, we shot with a big crowd. Right. So I thought, wow, that's a lot of people. Uh, and you could see the crew between setups and on turnarounds. They all ran to the machines and and they were they, they got to go at it and they had a fantastic time. 
And then, but me, no, I, I hightailed it out of there and just <laughs> took a breath. And yeah, yeah, you can you cannot get me out of there fast enough. So while Charles was playing skee ball with Quinn, Laza was making waves. No, with no, 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 no. We played basketball. We played basketball. And whenever the camera wasn't running, You're I was right. just, you know, one after the other, just draining shot after shot after shot. And then the camera rolls and I cannot make a basket to save my life and that of course it becomes right. competitive between quinn and charles and it also becomes very competitive between laura and peter because we're both sort of competitive people how quinn and charles were playing basketball liza was making waves with kai the surfer peter how what do we what do we think about kai we think that he's maddeningly handsome <laughs> and he walked in and then i was mad obviously um <laughs> And, uh, and he was so, and he was so nice and he was so, so her, her, and I mean, talk about a rebound. I go to David Buster's, uh, and then there's this fairly chaste kiss, not initiated by me. Um, and she's in the shower <laughs> with the surfer. So, I mean, I, I, I think my rebound was, uh, somewhat more measured, than hers. Peter, are you a risk taker in real life? And if so, what's the biz biggest risk you've ever taken? The big, very fun, incredibly <laughs> fun thing I did do, which is certainly life-threatening and people died the year that I did it, um, is I ran with the Bulls in Pamplona. <gasps> no way! Um, which yeah. Was, yeah, which was just the whole experience the whole i had lived in spain for six months and then that summer i um i a, 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 a bunch of friends and i uh, from there from spain went to pamplona and uh and did the bull running one morning and that, that and that was just i didn't quite have the words for it but just very exciting very exciting because there's also there's also the threat of really perishing yes uh, so that makes that Thanks for some pretty serious adrenaline. Also an animal that you absolutely cannot reason with <laughs> that's just running. Um, and then I went, I went, I've gone skydiving. I did, I did a tandem, which is the way that you start out. So when you have someone, you know, you have someone strapped to your back yeah. because people, if you, if you, if they jump out on their own, then you, they forget to just, they're so panicked that they forget to pull the rip cord. They forget to open the <laughs> chute. So me. you need the guy to back. Like, <laughs> hey, you need a parachute. Yeah. Um, but as I, like as I get older and I have kids and I'm married, uh, I you know I've always wanted to uh, uh, own and ride a motorcycle. Totally out of the question. Yeah, it's just out of the question. Uh -huh. um, and like my version of owning a motorcycle is just it's just online going to BMW and Harley Davidson. I just look at motorcycles online and Triumph and I and Ducati and I look at motorcycles. So that's my version of and I dream. Peter, um, you're, a risk risk -free. you're a risk taker though. You're a risk taker. I'm impressed. Like running with the bulls, but the, skydiving. You know, but, but, but then, but as you, but as you get older, like the idea of risk becomes so much more philosophical. Like the you know the the biggest risk in the end is not to risk, right? Is not to do the thing. That little thing in your head where you say like, man, I, I've always wanted to try blank. And all my life, I've come up, I've piled on reasons not to do that. That's risky because then you watch time go by and just live with this habitual, oh, I ought to, or I should have, or I wish I had. Uh, and, and the risk doesn't, and, and compared to that and the consequences of that, running with the bulls or jumping off of a spreader on a mast or jumping out of an airplane is minimal. That's child's play compared to that risk. Okay, oh, wait, what is that sound? You guys, we have a visitor, we do. We have a visitor, and it is the writer of tonight's episode, Allison Brown, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Allison, this episode's incredible, and very bold, might I add. I have to ask you a question right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, you gotta talk me through the writer's decision to bring Charles and Quinn together. Like, did you guys debate that? Whose idea was it? It's a bold one, for sure. Well, he was, he's rebounding. And like, like Peter said, Laura's so great. And we knew we had to kind of um, bring her down to earth a little bit. Like she can be a little bit of a villain. And mm -hmm. so we knew we had to play this um, other side of Quinn, which Laura did so well. But we still, we go to Dave and Buster's. So there's still that little uh, crazy fun part of her too that we get to see. 
So also, Allison, um, and I'm sorry to bring this up in front of you again, Peter, but Kai, I got to bring up Kai. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm going to log off. Your arch, ne- your arch nemesis. Yeah, so it was great. Allison, tell us how you guys came up with the Kama Surftra, like journals, Kai's journals, and all of his books being these dirty doodles. Where did that come from? That was so random. I mean, it was one of those things where it's like, what can this be? You know what I mean? <laughs> what will this book be? And I don't know how it got to dirty doodles. It was pretty early on. It kind of like sometimes things start off as like a room joke and then right. they become real. And you're like, I can't believe that we're really doing this. But it worked <laughs> out. It worked out. And he was the actor was so great. You didn't kind of um, initially we were like, oh, he's we're going to play him like he's kind of like a dumb guy. And that, I don't think that guy comes across that way at all. No, no, no. No. He, he's like a, yeah, he, I mean, he, he's like a, like a slightly more artistic Laird Hamilton. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, but I also think that the good thing about the way that, you, that, that you, that you wrote him and the way that, that he was played is that he's the total counterpoint in, in a sense that yeah. because Quinn is such, is so the counterpoint to 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 uh, to Liza, yeah. he's also the counterpoint to Charles. Yes, yes. Right? right, he's so free and so. Uh, I mean, and not not loose with his moral. I don't mean I don't I don't mean that, but just lives by a yeah. totally different code. But his code is completely coherent. Yeah. It's not like he has no uh, no rhyme or reason to him. Mm-hmm. But and and I think the fact that he is the rebound to Charles is as elegant as the fact that Quinn is the rebound right. uh, uh, for for Liza. Yeah, you kind of go to the thing that you don't have right after a break. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Peter, it's your turn. If you have anything you've ever wanted to ask a younger writer, now is your chance. You can ask Allison one question, one, anything you want. Go for it. I wasn't prepped for this. <laughs> um, all right, I'll ask, I'll ask her something. What's, what is something that you, for seven seasons, have wanted to, or if there is anything that, like, is there a thing like, God, I wish that I got a chance to put blank in a script like i have such a good idea or what's what's an idea that you put out in the room where you're like mm, i wish that that could make it in oh i can't repeat that it's a it's another room bit but i honestly feel like uh i i don't have any regrets about this i don't have any feeling of like oh i wish we could have done that because i i just i don't know i feel so satisfied with this show and how it's how it's turned out like the, the ending i know i overheard you talking about this taylor the ending to me is such a perfect way to end this show and so it wraps it up for me in a way that i don't know just i don't I have- and that ladies and gentlemen is a politically correct answer <laughs> and the follow-up will be virtually like there was this one thing the off-camera where- <laughs> thing yeah <laughs> usually in the other like room. just jokes that are too dirty to like put in the show the jokes are just perfect. The jokes perfectly toe the line for me. You know, I found yeah. that mouth agape yeah, yeah. on more than one occasion for sure. Like, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, we shouldn't have put the things in that I'm silently talking. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Fair enough. Well, Allison, you guys, you're literally wizards in that writing room. What you guys do is yeah. next level, and you're also prophets. I feel like you predict like the cultural and social undertones of the of the year that we're walking into before we even go there how do you guys do that oh i think we're we're constantly just like reading the news and trying we're trying to do that thing we're trying to stay on top of it so and you're almost intentionally predicting or attempting to we're attempting to yeah we're definitely attempting to for sure job well done it works like but you know know what you know what the interesting thing also was on on this show that the you all as writers and the right you know the writers room was so accessible was so accessible to all of us and that is so unusual you know we used to be uh all in one building and i i don't i don't know that you always have a set of writers as preposterously lovely as you but all that's what we would say were and guys. are we would say the same about you guys no you are but what am i no you guys <laughs> oh, no, you would. no we love you more so, no, so the, the, more. the relationship was really beautiful the relationship was really really beautiful it was and great. um yeah yeah no it was it was really really quite something that's over now that's all <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was nice while we had it if yeah. Pete- and it's amanda right yeah it's, it's, it's amanda <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i love like, it 
Allison, Amanda, just kidding. Allison, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We'll see you soon, I'm sure. See you guys. Okay, guys. So during the final, right, let's talk about. <laughs> let's talk about her behind her back. Okay, you know what I really think of her is. <laughs> It was just one time where this one script she wrote where... I, was, I was so mad for days. I would never talk to her. I was so mad. <laughs> okay. During the final season of Younger, we're spending a little time in each episode of Getting Younger to look back at where the show has been. Uh, while there were quite a bit of smoochings in tonight's episode, I don't know if any of them could compare to this squeal-worthy kiss from season two. Let's take a look. I appreciate you saying that. We want you back. At empirical. I don't know. Just think about it. While you're at it, think about this. I will definitely give that a lot of thought. Rip. God, it's so long ago. I know, it's so good. In the Paramus Mall, of all places. <laughs> Paramus Mall. Right? Peter, what do you remember about shooting that Charles and Liza first kiss? I remember I, remember I was nervous, which is perfect because Charles is nervous. And it's a, it's a big deal for him. You know, a, as a character, he is, he is written and played as a person who, in the arc of the show, learns to drop more from his head down into his heart and so this is out of character for him and it's interesting looking back on it you know this was that that was pre me too that was pre uh, I, I don't know if that scene would be written the same way now right where a right. man just decides like it, it, it is my right to communicate with you in that way right now i think that there i think that that would have been because uh, in in a sense, it's it, that that's a that's a very old school scene, and it's a beautiful yeah. scene, uh, but it certainly uh, is not. And that's really interesting to look back on that, even in the span of our show, right? In those seven years, I mean, God, how much has changed? I, one, one thing that I will say is that like Sutton is just the greatest person to essentially play any scene with, and she is. Uh, She's just so she's she's a just a luminous person and a and just a, a a really wonderful person to act with. So it was really fun to do that together. Oh, it's so fun to watch you guys do that together. Well, speaking of the two of you, Charles and Lot have come so far since that really first romantic moment. So when you reflect back on their journey together, what do you think about? I think. Uh, what, do, what do I think about? I think about uh, complexity. Uh, I think about romance. I think about uh, two human beings trying to figure out a life together. Uh, I think about two people being very honest with each other and very dishonest with each other. Uh, and I think about. And I it always for me it, a lot of it always comes back to uh, I think about a lot of great writing yeah you know god I just um and the way that you know our, our group of writers is able to keep the tone of a character and the arc of a character consistent right obviously very intimately tied up with that when I think of Charles and Liza is again how incredible it is that I got to work with Sutton for seven years what an incredible thing to, and just in, in, in the sense of telling this story together, but also just watching someone work, right. watching someone who is that good at what she does work. I think that Liza is so deeply, deeply hers. And that was an incredible thing to watch. Oh. And to be a part of for, for, for these years. Peter, you can't make me cry, okay? We're only like a quarter of the way into the season and I have makeup on. Please. Don't cry <laughs> until the end. Okay. Because then you got to fix your... Until the end. <laughs> okay. Peter, it's time for a little game. It's a segment we call Stealing Younger. Fans want to know... Wait, what is it? Stealing Younger, Okay. 
So oh, yeah, okay. fans want to know if there's anything from the younger set that you may have taken home on purpose or by mistake. So Peter, show us nope. what you've stolen from younger. Mm-hmm. No. Um, well, okay, so if you watch, and if you watch carefully, you will see in the uh, scenes in pretty much anybody's office or wherever there are books that every now and then there are there's a gap um, in the bookshelf. And wherever there's a gap, that book now lives at my house. <laughs> and I... And I, I have justified it because I, I always said I'm rescuing the books because the, those books are just going to go back into the boxes and, this, and, and that's not where a book wants to be. A book wants to be out of the daylight on a bookshelf. It wants to be open. So I, I thought of it as a kind of a, a, a like rescue mission, <laughs> but it's essentially stealing. It's not even essentially stealing. It's stealing. It is flat out <laughs> theft from the set design department. Um, and I, I actually... Uh, and I, for, so for, and it's not just like small paperback volumes. For instance, I stole this, um, which is a nice, yeah, yeah. And, and this is, this is, but look, it has a little remainder thing, which is like, off the cheap table at the, at the Strand in New York. <laughs> like, right? Totally. Um, but this is, for instance, this is a dictionary of slang and unconventional English, Eric Partridge Macmillan from, um, and oh, and this is this is this is uh, from a scene from a living room that I'm in, but I can't tell you what the scene is because it reveals too much. Um, like from 1961, right? So that's that's to me. Hold on, uh, there we go. Look, dictionary of slang. Look, and I read the set designer. If he watches this, he's like, where, where the hell's my book? That's where my book is. <laughs> that's where but, it is. Um, so that's what that's, and it's a show about books, and that's one of the reasons why I felt so happy that I got to play him because I got to be about around books all the time and rescue them. Thank you for all of your hero work. It's so incredible. And you, you, somebody has to do it. It's honorable work. <laughs> Peter, before I let you go, I have one final question for you. What's one yeah. word, one word that you would use to describe what's in store for Charles this season? Reckoning is too dramatic. It's too dark. Um, but um, reality. Ooh. Me going to ponder that one for a while. Reality. Yeah, reality. Oh, reality. That's good. Thought provoking. Peter. Yeah. You're the best. Thank you for joining me. You're the best. Oh, I love you. It's so good to see you. You put them and just talk to you. You just, you fill my soul. You fill my heart. I like put him. I love that word. That's such a good word. You put him. You put him. You got a good put him. <laughs> you got a good put him. <laughs> I wish we were in person so I could pinch your face. Not- I know, it's all I got to <laughs> Peter, thank you so much for joining. You're the best. Thank you. You're the best. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon, too. And you guys, thanks to everybody for watching along. Um, I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is Getting Younger. Join me right here after next week's episode for more behind-the-scenes stories and insights from the cast. Until then, here's a sneak peek of what's coming up. You do not have to read that book. Oh, no. It's well written. I mean, even if a lot of it sounds like bullshit. Well, it's a book about failure written by a billionaire. Of course it's bullshit. But these stories that she tells, they sound phony. I mean, is anyone really going to believe that Pope Benedict consulted her about admitting female clergy? Well, Charles is editing the book. Maybe we just let him worry about it. Yeah, but he's not seeing things clearly because they're whatever they are. Okay, he's not seeing things clearly? This has nothing to do with us. Naomi Wolf's last book got canceled when they found out that it was full of factual errors. Her publisher lost a ton of money. Quinn has already hired a third party fact checker. And she's never forged anything before, has she? Are we just going to sit by while the woman who almost bankrupted our company once and besmirched our reputation threatens to do it again? (sighs) Okay. Liza, I want you to know that I recognize your passion. Okay, I respect it and I fear it. Okay, ignore her. Ignore this. Okay, it's Charles's problem now, not yours. Okay.